Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group. I'm back with another edition of the weekly economic review, this time for the week ending March 25th, 2022. So a lot of uh, geopolitical action uh, around, a lot of movements in the markets. So let's start uh, right with the markets here. Um, uh, the, as the market returns as of the close on Thursday this week. So another negative week uh, for bonds. So the story now is central banks, they're not thinking just about putting the brakes on uh, the, the economy by hiking rate. They're, they're talking about putting both feet on the brakes, so they're really they're really serious about their intention to uh, to accelerate the pace of tightening. More on that later, but of course that pushes interest rates higher and that pushes the returns on a bond portfolio lower. So minus one percent on the week for the Universe Index, which is the index that's mostly used for Canadian bond portfolios. Minus one point one percent for the Long Index. Uh, year to date minus 7.4 for bonds, minus 13.2 for long bonds. So very negative year, one of the worst start to a year ever and one of the worst quarters ever for uh, the bond index. Looking at equities, a uh, positive week. Uh, um, market still seems to be finding some solace in the fact that the Fed is serious about inflation, but we would still be careful about seeing that this is a strong foundation for uh, expected returns. We do think that it's an environment where maybe putting some money at work uh, makes sense uh, because of the pullback that we've had. But still, I would be very careful before seeing this. The low is in and it's time to go all in on equities. Uh, we still have some uh, some reserves on our end, but uh, the TSX is still outperforming the S&P 500 by about 10% uh, so far this year. So that's a good performance. NASDAQ is starting to give us some more returns, but uh, we're, we're still um, we're still waiting it out before uh, changing our stance of being rather neutral on equities, but with an overweight on uh, Canada. Um, other markets, the price of oil uh, up um, by 7.3% on the week, Canadian dollar higher, price of gold higher, so lots of volatility, but commodities help Canada and uh, the Canadian dollar. So geopolitics this week, um, lots of uh, action centered around the price of oil. So uh, Russia is uh, shutting down some pipelines because of doing some maintenance work, but of course it's putting pressure on Europe and Europe wants to uh, to remove itself from its dependence on Russian energy. And when we talk energy, it's not just oil, it's also natural gas and coal. So um, most of that comes from, uh, or at least a very large chunk of these imports come from uh, Russia. And uh, now we're talking about the sanctions. It's hard to sanction Russia efficiently if uh, you're still buying all of this energy uh, for, from it. So that's why Europe wants to accelerate its independence uh, from uh, Russia uh, energy. And uh, Putin wants uh, unfriendly countries now to pay for their oil in rubles. That's a good way to move around sanctions if you're not paid in dollars and euros, which you have a hard time switching to rubles after and you see the ruble depreciating so much. Well, one of the solution is to ask to be paid in rubles so you can use them uh, instantly and that supports the level of the ruble too. So that's why we have this. So the price of Brent is now back uh, uh, near uh, the uh, all time highs. So uh, lots of action on the uh, oil market. So uh, Europe, the European economy, of course, is uh, is uh, going to be uh, facing a huge uh, headwind. From all of that, I think the odds of a recession are rising. It's not yet the base case. It's still an alternative case, but uh, uh, when you see businesses uh, losing confidence and here households are losing confidence by uh, the most since uh, uh, the onset of COVID, uh, that tells you a lot. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we we'll see where we end up for the European economic growth. We're hearing from uh, from France and from Germany that they're working and are already starting to put on a few fiscal packages uh, to help. So uh, we'll see where growth uh, ends up. But uh, we were seeing very good things from Europe at the beginning of the year. Now probably it's going to be underperforming because of all of this thing here. So uh, if we move now to uh, the important, uh, the most important topic of the day for the markets, uh, the Federal Reserve now we're hearing that they're uh, start looking to move pretty strongly 
uh, at first so over the next few months in their tightening process. So Mr. Powell said in a quote that inflation is much too high and the Fed will take the necessary steps to address it. So that probably means hiking much quicker than expected. And um, even Mrs. Daly, uh, the, the head of the San Francisco Fed, uh, came out saying that probably uh, need a um, half point rate hike in May. So 0.5% higher instead of 0.25, so two in one. Uh, that's good. That's what could could come in May, and maybe even I was starting to think that probably this summer another 50 basis point. I just to make sure that the market understands that the Fed is serious about tackling inflation expectations. So on the right here, you see uh, on the chart that the, the the markets what's implied in the market prices. So when you look at the many market instruments that trade out there, you can infer uh, the expectations for rate hikes for each of the meetings. Well, you can see that uh, the market is pressing in a lot of hawkishness, so it's ready to take it. So they can hike quickly and it's, it, won't, um, it won't surprise the markets to do so. So the door is wide open for them to hike pretty quickly. And on the, uh, the, the next slide, you see that inflation expectations are the key variable because if you're a central bank and you have a target between one and three percent inflation target, you want to make sure that the in expectations from the public from the markets are anchored around your target because if not that's where that's when you lose credibility because if the market if consumers and businesses start expecting inflation of three four five percent to stay well they're going to be signing some uh, some uh, work contracts with this inflation uh, level embedded in it, uh, contracts with suppliers with this kind of inflation embedded in the contracts, and that's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it's going to be very hard for central banks to rein inflation back in without causing a recession like we saw in the 1980s. So right now, when you look at these charts, you see that for the one-year survey on the left, it's a consumer survey, for the next year, uh, consumers are expecting about 6% inflation. Over the next three years now, it has started to come off, less inflation expected. Over the next year, we're still in the, the, the band of 1% to 3%, but uh, it's all trending higher. So the central bank, by acting boldly, decisively, can rein these in inflation expectations back in, and that's the plan here. And on the right, you see the break-even rate, so that's what uh, the market is implying. Uh, it's still within the, the band, uh, but again, it's trending higher. So central bank, they want to act quickly, decisively to get back uh, this thing on track. And the yield curve right now, it's sending a few uh, signals. So on the left, you have the 50, uh, the, the, the 30-year rate minus the five-year rate. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been, uh, flattening quite a lot we've heard about that in, in the news in the in the media so what that means is that the market is starting to think that maybe uh in the, the economic growth is going to be tapering off uh so over the next uh, five years 30 years if we do uh, su succeed in hiking uh enough to bring inflation back in that's going to cost something on growth so you're seeing the uh, the spread between five and 30 year uh be getting tighter and tighter so it's kind of sending a signal that the fed cannot hike uh too much here but on the right the most important one is the 10 month versus 10 year versus three month uh slope and this one has a very good good track record of uh, timing recessions so warning about recessions uh close to them not with a, a, a lag of a few years so uh now what it tells us is that uh, the bank of canada here has room to hike maybe uh seven times more so 175 basis points before you start uh hitting let's say a danger zone here so there's some room for the bank of canada to hike to be bold at first and maybe then reassess the situation after after it has a uh, hiked uh, a bit over the next quarters so um so, so some uh, some uh, maybe not uh, easy to digest topics here but very important for what's going on in the market so that's why i wanted to share them with you what uh, we're expecting next week we'll have a gdp growth in canada for january so december was pretty strong 3.9 percent year over year in december the u.s personal income personal spending and we'll have the uh, jobs report next friday 450,000 jobs are expected 
in March. Uh, in Canada, the, 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 the data will be out the week after, so no jobs report for Canada uh, next week. So that wraps it up for the week. IA.ca slash economy is your go-to web page. Subscribe to the uh, newsletter if you haven't done so already. You'll find a PDF copy of this presentation here on LinkedIn um, when it's, this is published, because on Friday morning, as I record, I publish that on LinkedIn. And you can follow me on, uh, on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and uh, some new content is uh, about to, uh, to be ready for Economy and Finance 101 in April. So stay tuned for more content there. So that wraps it up. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to serve you, and I'll be back again next week.